So the opening credit sequence is pretty much a good indication of how this movie is going to turn out. It is like a silent movie with piano music, with William Hurt playing the villain with the moustache. Yeah, you know, it's just one step away from a girl been on a railroad, like... Oh, and that moment when you realise your crush from the film Michael is now an old man. Time. It's scary. It would have been a time when I got super excited over Ed Norton, William Hurt and Tim Roth in a movie together, but <laughs> there just really isn't anything to get excited about with this. As much as it starts off well, besides the opening sequence, a bit of a mishap, it's like the Hulk tripped up at the top of a very high hill and he just keeps tumbling and tumbling to just a big crash at the bottom. The CJ was either not quite there or they just decided not to spend enough time and money on it. it it certainly is an improvement from the previous Hawk film, but it still looks like a cartoon. And Abomination looks like Cooper Trooper. A Cooper Trooper was on a hell of a lot of steroids. I just can't get past his growing pants. I really don't care how stretchy those pants are. It just does not make any sense to me. And I've never been able to get my head around it, and I don't think I ever will and they never find the right answer for it other than these are really stretchy pants. No, 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 the Hulk is huge, <laughs> it makes no sense. It does have a nice nod to the TV show when Banner turns into the Hulk, but also at the same time, it probably tries too hard to pay homage to the TV show, such as, you know, every episode of the Hulk, Banner would wander off by himself because he'd cause so much destruction and chaos. And we see moments like that in the film, and I just think it would have been nice for the film to have its own voice at this point. Editing isn't very slick. There are moments where you question whether you sat on the remote and skipped a chapter. At the time of the release, I quite enjoyed the music as it reminded me of the stage show Drum Chasers, which I really recommend. Go Google it. But when I listen to it now, it just, it's, uh, it's just a bit of a big headache. And that really is no reflection on drum traces, by the way. Uh, yeah, I do recommend you check them out. <laughs> but I do think the reason why it's just one big headache is because the style of the music just doesn't fit the film. Usually I do complain about linking films in a universe. Uh, you know, that's why I love Iron Man so much, because it is a standalone. Uh, but when it came to the MCU, they started linking everything everywhere, and I usually get a little bit annoyed, but with this I actually quite liked it in the sense of, uh, I like that the super soldier serum is a connection to Captain America, but also at the same time, what is it saying about the movie if that is the one thing you get most excited about is something about another character? This does have a connection to Iron Man when it comes to themes, you know, the form of anti-weapons commentary, but it doesn't seem to just cushion itself well uh, in the comic book universe like Iron Man does. It kind of subtly puts it in there and I think I said it comfortably cushions itself in or something. I can't quite remember the words I use now but this is anti-weapons and comic book movie and it doesn't quite gel together very well. Thanks for watching, be sure to like the video and leave a comment with your thoughts and feelings in the comment box below. Keep your eyes peeled out for more reviews of mine from the MCU and don't forget to subscribe. Hulk smash!